All right. So anyway, what? Okay. Yes. Um, go. No. Thirty-two fifty-five. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta remember where I I have to edit this now. <laughs> We are Rat Salad Review, and I am Wayne Noon, and you are... And I am Anderson Cooper. (laughs) And this is Rat Salad Review 360. Welcome. This is Rat Salad Review After Hours, right? Starting off for the first story today, Power Trip are in the studio working on their third album. Who the hell a Power Trip? How do you not know who fucking Power Trip are? (laughs) The new big I, four of thrash metal consists of Municipal Waste, Power Trip, Havoc, and Warbringer. And Power Trip are the fucking heaviest. Not really? the most extreme. Warbringer have more like extreme metal influence, but Power Trip are like a combination of Metallica's first album, fucking Chromags, and then like X Hoarder. It's really? fucking insane. I've seen them twice. They're fucking great. You'll have to send me something because I, I know the name. I, I, I've i heard of the name. I just They're never heard the music. It. So send it and to And they're me. recording this album with the producer of Sacred Rex's last album, which is good news for anyone who has ears. Really. I didn't like the sound of that album. Sacred Rex? Yeah. Oh. I, I thought it sounded like shit. Unfortunately, I could be wrong. I thought it was a great album for 2020. I don't know. I didn't really give it a huge listen yet, but the songs that I did hear, I didn't like the production of it. I don't know. X Hoarders last up or X Hoarders new album was the best album of last year, hands down. Mm. More in the Southern Skies was fucking brutal. And if you like X Hoarder, listen to Power Trip. Power Trip is fucking awesome. I I never listened to X Hoarder either. Well, there's your first mistake. That is a mistake. Send that to me, too. Okay. School me. School me, bitch. I'll school you. All right, school me. What else you got? Next in the news, Chris Hansen is going to investigate Blood on the Dance Floor singers, um, Blood on the Dance Floor singer Davi Vanity. And if you are used to be an emo kid like I used to be, you know that guy fucks 14-year-old girls. Really? Yep. I wonder why he never did anything for the guy from Man of War. Remember that whole thing? No. The, the guitarist from Man of War, you didn't know about that? No. This is like uh, probably two years ago now. Yeah, they found out he was uh, he had child porn in his house. They found all these videotapes and everything. Explains the loincloth. <laughs> no, he was he was not in the band at the I know. period of time. I, I figured. <laughs> but, I don't uh, know. Man of War like the most fetish strapped band outside of Judas Priest as far as I can tell. Yes, they are. It's like outside of like Judas Priest and Venom, no one else wears more leather harnesses and, and <laughs> leather fucking assless chaps. Probably than Man not. Of War. Probably not. Man of War is uh, gay as hell and I love it. Yes. Uh um, No, come on. Come on. Come on. They're not gay. Come on. No. They sing about warriors and, and gods and things. Come on. That's not gay. How's that gay? Fucking look at them. They look like He Man. They look like heavy metal and they believe they look what like they do. He-Man. They That's look like what... He Man. Hey, they're in good shape. And they sound like He Man and they sing about things that sound like He Man. It's if, it's about as gay as He Man is. Isn't that what you want though in your He Man stories? Well, yes. <laughs> But that doesn't mean it's not gay. I never said it was bad, just that it's unbelievably flamboyant. I don't think so. And corny and beautiful. 
It's like the 60s Batman equivalent to metal. <laughs> well, good. At least you agree with the uh, Batman stuff. Uh, so, well, who's this band that Chris Hansen is going after? Blood on the Dance Floor. They're an awful yeah. emo band. I was never really into emo. Uh, neither was I. I just knew this band by proxy. Mm. I was more into like the whole... I was more into the bands that sound, that were influenced by older bands, but are, that are, I was more into like Avenge Sevenfold, Black Veil Brides, that sort of thing, where they have older bands as their influence. Right, yeah, yeah. Instead of being like, my girlfriend broke up with me. Oh, my God. You know? I think, uh, the emo I get is Weezer. That's it. God, e- Weezer's not even emo. Weezer's They're not. Just, They're not Weezer's, emo. Weezer's the communion wafer of music. <laughs> I saw them live. They were boring as hell. They were. I was so upset about that too when I saw them. I was like, "This is this is well, a shame." My dad and I went because Pixies were opening. Really? Pixies are oh, fucking Pixies. great. I don't like them. Uh, what else you got? After that comes King Crimson is going on tour with the Zappa band. Oh, that's so, for Frank all you fucking here. prog nerds out there. Greg should have been here for that one. Yeah, Greg should have been here. Fucking bearded Ditch fuck. Ditch Evil like ass goatee looking ass. Fucking <laughs> plotting my downfall looking ass. Are you a fan of King Crimson? <clears throat> I don't care about them. No. Check out the I'm song not, Court of I'm the Kim- bi- Crimson King. That's a good song. They remind me of Rush. They're both Canadian, aren't they? Something like that. Maybe. I don't know. That's but they do have good. at least one good song that I know of. I know they're they're a decent prog band. I'm not huge into real, real yes rush type of prog. Mm. As far as like big grandiose prog rock goes, I'm more of a Boston guy. Oh, really? Boston fucking jams. They're a fucking jam band. That's what I like about them. It feels a lot less forced. Do you only like them because your girlfriend's from Boston? No. <laughs> Don't lie. Oh, more than a feeling's a great song. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really isn't. It really is. It's a terrible song. Would that make it to your top list? Oh, top list of what? Of whatever year that came out of. <laughs> oh no, that album would, but that song wouldn't. Mm, Boston like Self Titles is a fucking great album. I don't like it. What else we got? Actually, didn't um, I know the the singer from Anthrax started a, a like a tribute band? Was it a Boston tribute band or was it a Journey tribute band? I don't know. I don't care about what Joey Belladonna does outside of Anthrax. Right, I don't usually either. He's a good singer though. What else you got? He's an alright singer. You got a problem with um, your hair there? What's the I don't know. I was in the. There's a lot of wind today, so my hair's a bit fucked up. This came out a few days ago, but. Nine Inch Nails is the Downward Spiral turn 26. Thank God. Fucking great album. You know we're a metal show, right? Who gives a fuck? You put fucking Def Leppard on your list. But they were metal at one point. That's their only fucking metal album. Nine Inch Nails was never metal. And it always bothered me. Nine Inch Nails are fucking heavy, though. You weren't born at this period in time, but when Headbangers Ball was on MTV... Bro, I put fucking they dead Kennedys on my list, and you didn't, you didn't protest at all. Because I like them. <laughs> I like dead Kennedys, too. Uh, but they used to put Nine Inch Nails on Headbangers Ball all the time, and it would annoy the shit out of me. Because Nine Inch Nails fucking rock, dude. They, I never liked them. They're I hated heavy them so fuck. much. My wife likes them, and... Um, you know, I, I have the Amazon app oh. on my phone, and I put all her music on my app. So, you know, her stuff will come on once in a while, but as soon as Nine Inch Nails comes on, skip. I never this let it listen. This is a good it. album, but my favorite <laughs> album for Nine Inch Nails had to be Pretty Hate Machine. That was, that's the one that's fucking heavy. No. I fucking love Pretty Hate Machine. I hate Trent, Re- Trent Reznor. Fuck you. Trent Reznor is one of the best writers of dance music, like, ever. No. Yeah. Next. That's all I have, really. That's it. I know there was there's more really, stories. There's like no more news, dude. What What do you think of uh, the new ghost uh, mask 
Oh, that was pretty cool. It's a lot cooler than Cardinal Copia. Do you like that mask? You like you think it's yes, cool? Yes, anything is better than Cardinal Copia. And I thought that was cool. I, I, I like the dancing on stage, but I, I like the elaborate ass makeup a lot more, though. Yeah. Um, to me, it looks like... Uh, and maybe he did this purposely because the Joker was such a huge movie, but it almost looks like the Joker, in a way. If you look at the mask, it looks like the Joker a little bit. It's got sure. a similar, similar. Oh, here, here's here's some new story. Uh, Misfit Sue book publisher over signature skull design. Oh. That's huge news. Quick, huge. tell me who's given out more lawsuits. The Misfits, Greg Ginn, or Gene Simmons? <laughs> well, Misfits got to make money somehow. Uh, but they I don't know. Their the... fucking reunion tours seem to sell out every show. They did. Um, and that deal with Hot Topic seems to be making them plenty. Yes, it is. I just bought a shirt, a Misfits shirt from Hot Topics a couple weeks ago. I refuse to shop at Hot Topic. I worked there. <laughs> And I'm yeah. like, nope, not shopping there. Why? They had a good deal. I couldn't help it. Yeah, I know. I got 40% off when I worked there because it sucked. That's why. Mm-hmm. It does look like a boring store. Uh, I'm so really no, surprised. No, it was fun to work at. It was just my manager was an asshole. Oh. Well. I, was, I was fine working there. The soundtrack was great. Mm. I worked there during Halloween. They had the best soundtrack all year. Oh, really? Good shit. Yeah. I mean, if anyone cares, coming to a casino near you, Rat announces a summer 2020 tour with Cinderella's Tom Kiefer, Skid Row, and Slaughter. No, nobody cares about Rat. That's why I said coming to a casino near you. Do you think anybody cares about Rat? Round and Round is an alright song. I don't know, they're Uh, certainly better than Cinderella and Slaughter. (laughs) You shut your mouth with Slaughter. Uh, Violent Signs... So bad. I don't. They know are why not I like that garbage. Oh my! That first album is amazing. Garbage. Shut your mouth. It is not garbage. garbage. It is not garbage. Garbage. Maybe I've written better music than that, and I hate my music. <laughs> and so will a lot of people when you finally <laughs> yep. release something. <laughs> yup. Come to the uh, show. Yeah. When is your first show? By the way, you um, posted on Twitter. Confirmed May eighth, but we're trying to book something on the thirty first this month. Do you think we'll be out of the uh, the coronavirus scare by then? I don't give a fuck about the coronavirus. Will you? Will will major uh, malfunctions no, still we will, play? We will. We're like anthrax. We're not changing our name. We're not. <laughs> we're not, not. We're not going away because of a virus. But will you, will you still carry on? The, the virus will not stop major malfunction. You know, despite all the exhaustive touring we're, we've been doing, and all the. <laughs> And all the work on the album. <laughs> I guess we'll have to just keep pressing on. Oh, good. That's good to hear. I don't want to hear that you're going to quit. <laughs> I know. This, I'm almost burnt scare. out on touring at this point, you know? Mm-hmm. Don't. <laughs> First Slayer, now us. Don't be scared that Tom Hanks and his wife both have coronavirus, okay? Don't let it I don't stop. want Tom Hanks to die. Tom I Hanks is old. He might, he might not necessarily die, but he does have diabetes. So, oh. how did he do that? Be... I heard oh. from um, I, when you gain weight and then you lose it and gain it and lose it and stuff like that, like uh, I guess too fast or it's too sudden or something from you know doing all the movie roles. I, I think that what? Uh, Christian that. Christian Bale's done that. Tom Hanks isn't had to do any like That's severe physical training for a movie. I don't. He know. plays Forrest Gump and Mister Rogers. That's what I heard. That's all I've heard, okay? And cast away. Uh, Violence signs with uh, Metal Blade Records. Uh, that was fucking great to see that they've signed with Metal Blade, I think, again. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I think Eternal Nightmare came out on Metal Blade. Um, Either that or it was combat. It was... Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, it was probably re-released on, on Metal Blade, you know? Let me look uh, it up. They don't bother. Uh, no, I'm curious. I fucking love Violence. A, a lot of bands. Oh, MCA Records. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, we, I mean, we were just joking about this, but uh, about canceling shows. A lot of bands are canceling their shows right now. We got the yeah, Testament Exodus. 
a testament exodus and uh death angel uh they yeah. sold out show in hanover canceled now to the coronavirus uh scares uh yeah a lot of bands are canceling this stuff uh saxon's uh biff byford uh canceling his european tour oh no this is not because of the coronavirus but that's because he had of... a heart operation didn't no he? this is be... yeah but he's fine but he's uh low ticket sales he canceled his tour oh really yeah wait saxon or just biff byford just biff byford oh yeah that makes sense why would anyone want to go see like a c-grade new wave of british heavy metal singer on tour without his band I'm not a huge Biff Byford fan, if you can tell. Is that right? I'm I'm not a huge Saxon fan, but don't say that because I was trying to get him on the show. <sighs> don't say that on the show. Hey, Biff Byford, you're really fucking cool live. I really liked seeing you live opening for Judas Priest in the Armory in 2018 in Minneapolis. Sure. I admire your live performance. I'm just not a huge fan of your albums. That's okay. You don't have to like everything, right? Still no, like but I, I respect a live a great live show way more than a great album, though. Yeah. Um, a, here's a band that is not going to cancel their tours. Magnum. They say fuck or coronavirus. Or Puddle of Mud. Or Puddle of Mud. They're still around. <laughs> Apparently. I'm just scrolling through Loudwire. Jesus it's just the, the headline said how your band can open for Puddle of Mud on a 2020 tour because <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to open for Puddle of Mud. <laughs> There is something funny. George Lynch on Judas Priest. Uh, I wish they would call me up and hire me. That'd be fucking cool if he wasn't such a cocksucker. That'd be kind of weird. He's a douchebag, but that'd be pretty gnarly. He shreds. I like see, I liked that he's back with Dokken on tour right now. Or not, complete, not completely back with Dokken, but it's cool to see him performing with them. I ne- never was a fan of Dokken. I'm not a huge fan of Dokken, but I do like George Lynch as a guitar player. Uh, In Flames signs with the Nuclear Blast for iconic... Thanks for interrupting me. Iconic Beck Catalog. So uh, they're going to, um, I guess, re-release Colony, Horacle, Clayman. Uh, Which band? Uh, in, 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 In Flames. Oh. Not a fan? No. I I'm really surprised. don't like I know it's boring death metal. Just like dark tranquility. Have you listened to the, the new gates. have you listened listen to the new stuff though? Yeah. And you don't like the new stuff. So I, I would think that would be more of your In early. Flames is indicative of every problem I have with Swedish death metal. Mm. I like them. I think they're cool. Not as much as I used to. Uh, I was never a huge, huge fan of them. But uh, yeah, they got some good stuff. I'd rather just listen to Bloodbath. Um, oh, one last thing. Um, I did a, uh, a thing on Facebook, and I, I put up a picture of uh, Sammy Hagar. Oh, did you like the second one <laughs> I put in there? I did. I'm going to read I some of these. The sec- uh, I thought the second one was funnier than the first one I got. The second one was funnier than the first one. I, I <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I did a, um, you know... Uh, uh, where the hell did it go? Uh, shit. Talk. So I can figure this out here. I'm going to plug in my phone. Hold. Plug in your phone. Uh, where did it go? You just commented on it too. Oh, yeah, here we go. Nope, that's not it. Uh, bear with me here. I'm going to have to edit this now. 257. Come on, turn the fucking speaker on. All my all the things that I'm doing are are your stuff. Here we go. So yes, I put up this picture of uh, Sammy Hagar, and I said, "Caption this," and we had uh, quite a few people caption that photo. We need to do this more often, and we need to do this with Vince Neil. We, we do need to do this more often. Uh, Greg, Greg commented. He says, uh, are you looking for a vocalist with no personality to sing on your next mediocre record? I'm your guy. Uh, my friend Jeff, uh, coming next week on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. <laughs> uh, uh, Wes Lewis, uh, if you're looking for a good quality used car, come see me. Uh, Lou Mavs from the Music is Life podcast. He commented, uh, "Hey, 
I was in Van Halen, but I'm not in Van Halen anymore. But I still talk about Van Halen because I did nothing good other than join Van Halen. But those <laughs> albums sucked anyway. What have you done? <laughs> yeah. Uh, our good old uh, Nate Lander. He uh, he wrote, uh, only you can be... Re- <laughs> prevent me from joining van halen again because he's pointing at the fucking screen yes he looks like uh what's that bear i like my other one read my other one wayne and your other one that you wrote uh you want to see what look (laughs) you want (laughs) you want to see what a varicose vein looks like (laughs) that one was (laughs) so gross uh someone like imagine like lifting up his fucking Pants like here, check this out. Too funny. Uh, Big Ray, uh, he wrote shit. I thought that was DDP. Uh, And Zane Haywood, uh, yeah. While Diamond Day was banging California girls, I was singing with Van Halen. Who won that battle? So that was some of the uh, things from the caption. This (coughs) caption. This Sammy Hagar edition. We need to do this. Like, yeah, this has got to be a regular. This has got to be a weekly thing now. It should be. Uh, I did the King Diamond one, too, and nobody really did that one. That one was funny, too. Well, because we don't want to make fun of King Diamond. But that was hilarious. I mean, come on. Look at this picture. How could you not? He's like... Well, yeah, he's ridiculous, but he's not a (laughs) douchebag. We like him. No, he's of course not. It's like making fun of Ozzy. We do it sparingly because we love the man. I can read some of the comments on that one, though. Uh, Jake Starseeker, uh, this isn't how it happens in anime. Uh, Jay Haunt Vox uh, from uh, Timeless Haunt, where the fuck is that recipe for chicken cordon bleu? <laughs> Our good old Uncle Saxon, these damn Mary Kay catalogs get thicker every year. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That is funny. But that's the kind of things that we do here at Rats Out of View. And if you follow us on Facebook, at our uh, Facebook page, you can join in those kind of... Oh, the books. next three should be Vince Neil, Gene Simmons, and Axl Rose. We could do that. Look for some good pictures. How about you look for a funny picture that we could caption? Oh, any picture of Axl Rose nowadays is funny. Anything. He's like anything. gained the weight of Slash and Duff McKagan. Yes, he did. No, actually, no, he's losing weight. Yeah, but like... Remember when he came out for the first time again and he was like... Oh, yeah. He well, looked like yeah. a fucking... He looked like sponsored the f- quarter pounder with cheese. <laughs> yes, he with did. With fucking Hulk Hogan mustache. What the fuck? Yeah, I, I don't know who I remember skinny heroin Axl Rose. What the yeah. fuck? It must have been a clone. And a, uh, you know, an overweight clone. <laughs> Stocking up for the winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yes, you can find all that kind of stuff on our uh, Facebook page. We are on Facebook. Uh, what is the thing? Facebook.com slash Rats Out Review. We are also on Twitter. Uh, rat, no, no, at Rat underscore Review. And Instagram, Rat underscore Review. No, a Rat underscore Salad Review. Something like that. Just look it up. And Rats Out Review dot com. Uh, anything else? Follow my band on Twitter, Major Malfunction, at Major M Band. That's right. Because I'm shameless. You are. And you will post some music soon. Why don't you post anything yes. of, of, like, studio stuff? I don't know. I'm not in charge of that. I'm well, who's taking to... the pictures? No, I, I'm i taking the pictures on, right. like, one of the other guys' phones. I don't run any of our social media accounts for obvious reasons. Why? <laughs> I'm incredibly inflammatory. In so case what? you haven't noticed. <laughs> That's all right. You gotta keep it yeah. You gotta keep it interesting. Yeah, not though. when you're not when you're trying to like market yourself. Just do it. You gotta you gotta do something. You gotta keep people interested in your band. And nobody's oh, gonna be interested yeah. if you don't post anything. Oh yeah, but like I don't wanna get protested. You're not gonna just just do it sensibly, like we do on this show. Just Think I before can't you edit do. my band. Think before you do. But you can take a video and edit that. You don't have to post it That's right not away. That's what I edit. do at this on the show. I don't think before I say anything because I know you can edit it. I really don't edit the show. 
I know. There's very, very little editing I do. You can't get I mad know. at us. What are you going to get mad at us for? We don't really say anything wrong. We have like 150 followers. Who the fuck is going to get mad at us? Who's got 150 followers? We. Us? I thought we did. Something no. like that. On YouTube? I thought on like Facebook. Oh, on Facebook, maybe. But on YouTube, we're up to like 230-something. 235, I believe. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. We'll be famous soon, I promise. Watch and we out, will. Joe Rogan. We're coming. Well, we're There's coming a for... new bald podcast host on the rise. Wait a second. Joe Rogan. Oh, wait, no. Is Joe Rogan is the... Who is Joe Rogan? Help He's me. the guy with like literally the world's biggest podcast. Is that the UFC guy? He's the guy from Fear Factor. The UFC guy? Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking of somebody totally different. I'm thinking of the conspiracy guy for some reason. That's Alex Jones. Alex Jones, which he just got arrested. He used to be friends with Alex Jones, and then Alex Jones got really crazy, and he's like, ah, fuck that. He just got arrested for DWI, I believe. Yeah, he blew under the legal limit, but if you're driving erratically, that doesn't really count as anything. Yeah. (laughs) I'm surprised the guy that fat can get drunk that easily. He's probably not a regular drinker, although he seems like he is. Apparently. But, uh, yeah. He needs, um, a miracle hang- he needs a miracle, like, sober pill that he can advertise now to go with <laughs> his brain pills. Yes, he does. And we should invest in those, too, as well. So uh, we can Ozzie. have some merchandise. Let's get Ozzy some. Yes, let's do that. Reverses dementia. Mm-hmm. And Parkinson's. <laughs> Biggest <laughs> investor, Joe Biden. <laughs> All right, so go to our rebs, web rebs. <laughs> Hello, go to our website. Please, please go to our website. It's a rat on the salad of you. Please get the shitty chicken. <laughs> All right, now we better end this before it gets bad. <laughs> Ratsalreview.com. Please buy a t shirt. It helps us keep the website website up, it helps us do the podcast. And all that stuff. If you buy enough t-shirts, we can make money doing this. And don't you want us to make money off of you? Don't you, please? Yes, you do. You don't want to make, wanna a, be make us. You don't want to make us make a Patreon, and then you got to pay for All shit. y'all are a bunch of fucking masochists, and you know That's that. right. You want to be exploited for our benefit. Yeah, you do. And if you don't want to buy a t-shirt, which you should, but if you don't want to... At least hit the fucking subscribe button. It's right there, or somewhere over here, wherever the fucking subscribe button is. Or if you're listening to it, it's where the subscribe button is on the phone or wherever you're listening to it. Just hit the damn button, please. So now now we are going to have an interview with uh, Matt Nilsson from the band Brothers of Metal. Do you, have, do you know who Brothers, Brothers of Metal is? I know it's a Man of War song. No, this has nothing. Well, no, they don't really have anything to do with Man of War. But they're, they got this big symphonic power metal band. That sounds like it has a lot to do with Man of War. Um, maybe. I mean, I guess maybe you can kind of compare that. But, but they have a, a chick in the band, so Man of War doesn't have a chick in the band. Uh, I trace all power metal back to Man of War, so it's... Check it out, though. It's not really... It's Well, okay. it's sim- symphonic metal. metal. Symphonic metal. I think it's cool. I, 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 hey, think I know really... you like Cage, so I know you have good taste. Yeah, exactly. I but... saw Cage live. They were fucking great. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna see this band. They yes, they do wear costumes and they probably do wear long cloths or whatever. But there's a girl in the band, dude. I I've been to four Guar shows. I don't care what people wear on stage at this. No, point. I know. I'm just I'm just telling you. I'm telling you what you're in for. And people okay, that so never heard a bunch of D and D nerds who play metal, basically. Right. So they play yeah, power right. metal. So they play power metal, symphonic power metal. Right. But they're not like the uh, the typical operatic vocals, except for the female. She does like the clean vocals and stuff, but they're okay. kind of growly-ish in a way. So kind of like Camelot? No, more like um, uh, like a like folk metal, like like the growly-ish kind of voice. I can't even think of um, a band that kind of sounds similar. You know, like the folky metal bands. You're describing Camelot pretty accurately here. Camelot's not folky. Um, Camelot's power metal band with guttural vocals, and they're like the only one I know. Camelot with guttural vocals? They have one like, song with the guy from Demi Borger on it. Is that it? Is that That's the it. one I've been hearing? 
That's the only song that they I've have. I listened to them on. too much. I I thought that, that was like. No, that's the only song that they do that on. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, maybe Fin Troll. That might be a good. Okay, comparison. like Fin Troll. Okay. Something like that. I don't. I'm not too fond of that. I, I I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with that band, so I, I'm not really sure. But the, I, maybe around the. I don't know too much about folk stuff. metal either, other than like Alestorm. So I'll send you a link, just like you sent me a link of the bands that we mentioned earlier. I'll send you a link to this band. All right, that settles that. Sure. Let's get to Matt's Nilsson. Really cool interview. Cool guy. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to Rat Style Review. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. You are from Brothers of Metal. Yeah. Yeah. Very new band. Uh, yeah, yeah, let me pronounce your name. Matt's Nilsson, right? Yep. Yes, okay. Perfect. Usually I have a problem with pronouncing everybody's name, but you got you got an easy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So, but, uh, where, uh, where, I didn't get to where, where are you from? I'm from New York. New York, nice. Yeah, yeah, a little bit away from you. Yep. Yeah, but uh, you're from Sweden, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, middle middle of Sweden. All right, cool. I just actually had somebody on from Sweden the other day. Uh, I don't know if you know the band Dead Cosmonaut. Uh, yeah, I heard of it, but didn't really listen to them. Oh, I'll give them a listen. They're very good. Yep. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, uh, Sweden's a great place. I mean, there's so many bands coming from there. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I, I, a lot of the bands I listen to come from Sweden. It's just I, I don't realize how many uh, things I really do listen come from there. It's it's you guys put out. I think you guys put out some of my favorite music, really, between Sweden and Finland. It's like yeah. my favorite stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like if you compare it to like how many inhabitants do you have in? New York, like eight million ish. Something like I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> too, like not, too many. Not, not counting like the, all the suburbs and yeah. and so on. But but the city I think have around eight million. So that's almost Sweden. We have ten millions. Yeah. And I mean, t- t- ten million people and so much music. Oh like, yeah, it's tons of of very very successful bands as well right. so it's really really impressive really yeah yeah do you like a lot of the american bands at all or yeah sure like uh a lot i, I think the best new metal music is from the states for sure um really? yeah like uh, five finger death punch you know oh, you all, like all, all those uh kind of bands um yeah. What what are they called? Um, Horizon. Uh, oh, uh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, uh, my my mind is they're escaping it now, but yeah, yeah there there's a lot of of a uh, great uh, American bands that I like for sure. All the old school like Metallica, oh, of course, those yeah. kind. Alter Bridge as well. Really, really great band. Yeah. See, those are the kind of bands I'm against. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. That, yeah, yeah. No, it's, no, it's but, funny but, because but, Americans kind of like, well, some of the Americans, like me, I like stuff that are outside of my area. I don't like stuff yeah. that's in America because it all sounds the same, you know? Yeah, it's very, very um, generic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's very generic, but it's, um, I would say it's high end generic. Right, yeah, of <laughs> if, course. Yeah. If, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. it's. But no, uh, like other than than the new metal, I don't know know much except for Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> Manowar. Yeah. Oh, you like Manowar? Yep. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> that name. Uh, yeah. How, how old are you? Uh, Thirty-four. Uh, Thirty-five. Oh. 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 So you're still young yet. So that's that's why you like you know the newer stuff. Mm. Although I'm mm. forty, so I'm only a few years yeah, old. Yeah. I'm I'm allowed to to like everything. <laughs> yeah, of course you are. Yeah. Do, do you find you you like uh you uh like you know the Sweden bands? Do you not like them as much as uh you know like the American bands? Yeah, way more. I, I like the I think I like the Swedish bands way more. Um, oh. in general, like uh, my favorite bands from Sweden would be probably Amon Amarth. Um. Sabaton, In Flames, mm, Soil yeah. Work, um, a lot of uh, melodic death metal I like right. from Sweden. Yeah. So on. Yeah, very cool. 
So um, I, I'm very new to your band. I heard yep. them. I heard your first album last year. I, I think it was last year. And I was actually going to write a little thing about it because uh, I started doing a show about two years ago, and um, then uh, yeah, it was the following year. Then I heard your album, and then I had like a little blog, and I, I wrote some little things here and there. Then I was really set to write about you guys, and it just didn't happen. I figured yeah. either one day we would talk about it on the show or whatever. But um, and I'm really into power metal. And I'm really into the style that you guys do, but that was like a few years ago, and I kind of got out of it a little bit and, and went into some other styles and even some lighter music too, which is just stuff out of heavy metal. And I kind of yeah. got bored with the genre, which I think everybody gets bored with the genre at some point, you know? Yeah. Because you can only listen to it so much. Yeah. But um, when I saw your album, I got it as a promo, and I saw the first album, and I, I gave it a listen, and uh, I was freaking blown away because it's just I haven't heard stuff like you guys do in a long time that was like really that good like the whole album was is awesome you know thank you <laughs> yeah i really enjoyed it and then when i saw you had the the a new album come out and actually you, you guys put the new album out fairly quickly uh, i couldn't wait to hear it yeah i mean it, for us it wasn't that quickly because i mean we were done with the first album 2015 okay um and we basically sat on it for two years, I think. Yeah, two years, one and a half, two years, uh, trying to, to, to get a decent uh, label deal, like mm. to have someone release the album. But it didn't happen. Uh, we spoke to a lot of people that I bet regret their past decisions a lot now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, couldn't find it and rightfully so we ha we hadn't released anything like we knew that we were like this is really good like right. we're really happy with this uh, right. but but like no one was willing to take the risk because we didn't release anything like right. no one knew how it would go right. um so the beginning of 2017 we decided like okay fuck that let's do it ourselves and yeah. we re released everything uh, independently and mostly uh, digital platforms and it went through the roof like the streaming was very very successful and it spread like wildfire um yeah. and yeah we were baffled by it and i guess so were the labels because all the all the guys I had been talking to before was suddenly a lot more interested oh, yeah. so yeah so we started dealing again and um yeah we we've got a good deal with uh, afm and um like yeah we, they decided that we need to re-release this album and give it like proper mm. pr and a proper release and so yeah. we did that but so you can imagine we, we had a couple of years in between where we we had to do something, so we started writing some new songs. Not not very motivated though. Um, th most of the songs we still wrote like within the last year. Okay. Um, but yeah, we we had some some songs, but it didn't really feel like we we were rushing things yeah. or so. Yeah. So you had some time there to think about it a while, for a while. Yeah, and like we didn't, yeah, so compared to the first album, yeah, for sure this was quicker, but wasn't that fast. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm listening, I'm listening to the new one the uh, last couple of days, and um, yeah, it's just awesome. Like, like, like I said, I thought, I thought you did, you know, you guys put it out fairly quickly, and um, I'm just thinking, like, with all the stuff that's in in this band, or like all the music and things that you throw into it, uh, how long does it take you to like to come up with a song? Uh, oh, it's very different. Like, from do you mean uh, until we have like the like, final? Do you, up, uh, do you do you start with one song at first, and then uh, you know finish that one first, or do you start like little parts and then <clears throat> you know work on other songs as you go? Or uh, both ways, I guess. Like. Um... We have some songs that we just finish instantly, more or less, mm -hmm. and, and just add like minor details and like the symphonic stuff. And, and those aren't minor uh, details. I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm listening to some of the shit. And it's like uh, movie scores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's because the drummer that does the symphonic parts, he 
his work is doing movie scores. So. Oh, really? Oh, well, so <laughs> and, the, that explains a lot to me yeah, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, for sure. And and uh, we feel it's very fitting to our music because a lot of the times we try to present a, a story like and tell tell a story and um yeah it really helps um i, I would say at least a lot yeah. of cases yeah but so usually we we um write uh, e- either we write a song finish it very fast like the the rough edge like right, the no rough no ideas. yeah yeah rough idea for for the song with all the lyrics some changes will happen for sure in the studio mm. um but sometimes we have like a chorus uh, laying around for two years and then we pick it up and oh yeah we got this uh, chorus let's do something with this um yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah it happens both ways i guess right yeah so um is the theme on this album is it have to do with like the first album too is that they blend together <laughs> Uh, yeah, some I wouldn't say all the songs, but um, so the first album was uh, about uh, the the end, the end of all things, like the apocalypse in, mm-hmm. in Norse mythology. It's Ragnarok, Ragnarok, yeah. um, and uh, this time around we wrote several songs on the theme, the beginning, like how it all began. Oh, so okay. uh, Embla Saga is um, Embla is the first female in Norse mythology, okay. like the Eve of North Norse mythology. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, th- that song is basically the whole myth of creation, um, and then you have the four opening tracks: uh, "Brood of the Trickster," the spoken uh, part d- d- track. Yeah. And then you have um, Power Snake, uh, Hail, and Chainbreaker. All those are about the beginning as well, like uh, different beginnings, but the big, like how, um, how basically this a lot of stories begin in in Norse mythology, and yeah. they will lead to the end. But yeah, so basically the theme was the beginning, I would say, for a lot yeah. of songs. Yeah. But yeah. I wouldn't call it like a, a concept album or so. We have several songs that's not about the beginning or so. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's funny because your, your albums do sound like they're concept albums, but... Mm. Yeah, but they're not. Neither that's of a, them. See, that's the, that's the thing I hate about because right now, as of now, I only have your albums on my phone, on, on fucking yeah. MP3s, and it's, it's, it's annoying. I... I usually I I do my my uh, podcast in another room and you would see all my music behind me. But... Um, I, I buy. I'm. I'm more of buying the physical copies. I buy the CDs or the vinyls or whatever. And, and listening to it on MP3s, you can only tell so much of an album. Like I would be able to look through your lyrics if I had the CD and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And see what the album's about. And that's what I hate about MP3s about you know nowadays because you don't you don't really get uh, to know the albums as much. Yeah, but I usually answer like if if um, <laughs> uh, praising heavy metal and. Uh, Norse mythology is a concept, then it's a concept album, yeah, 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 for sure. But but we have these like Brothers Unite one, uh, on this album and on last, yeah, Count Us, I guess, as well. It's not about any beginning at all. Um, last album we had uh, We Believe in Metal, Siblings of Metal, Fire, Blood, and Steel, like stuff that's not about. The, the end so right, it's not yeah. not 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 really a, a not clear clear cut no no pa- partial partial concept album <laughs> yeah yeah you ever, do you ever think you'll make a full concept album uh yeah probably when we start running out of ideas <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah maybe like we're open to it i guess but yeah, uh, yeah. there's no no such plan in the pipe right yeah um, now I noticed you guys wear all uh, costumes and stuff like that. Who's what's what was the story behind doing all that? Yeah, basically we realized from the get go that this isn't a t-shirt and jeans band. Right? This yeah, is, you cannot like, wear this. No, th- we need to do this all out. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do it. I think. Like, um, so. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, I don't think anyone <laughs> would would of us would be able to stand on the stage with a straight face doing this if we didn't have the clothes and right, the makeup yeah. and like we need to do it uh, all out. Otherwise, it's not doable. I think. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. You need something to back up the music and and just going like you said, going out there jeans and you know a t shirt's not gonna bring the music. No. Out. No. You know. Not for like worked for Ramones. Uh, yeah, right, that's uh, not going to work for you guys. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Are you into other bands that that do that kind of as well? Like you know, like there's Guar that you know have their costumes and things like that. Are you into all that kind of stuff? Uh, no, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> no, no one of us is really no, no. Um, but yeah, like all, nothing bad about Gore or Slipknot yeah. or. Uh, Rammstein or whatever, Lordy. Um, there are several bands that that goes through the tedious process of uh, two hours makeup and yeah. getting dressed before every show. Right. Like uh, I met Lordy this summer, and I think in total he does three hours. No, um, yeah, three hours before every show makeup oh, and yeah. and two hours removing it. So wow. it's. Like every every show is like five hours of makeup. Wow! So he's he's really into it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm guessing he hates himself as well for making that decision. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, probably. But he's been yeah. doing it forever, so he, he must yeah, be used yeah. to it by now. Yeah, you think he would yeah. make some kind of mask that just you know goes on his face yeah. and just go yeah. out there and do it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, but yeah, there's there's a lot of work with with that for sure. Yeah. 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 Now I noticed on this album, um, I'm gonna, probably going to pronounce her name wrong, but your your uh, vocalist um, Elva, Elva, Elva. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she seems to be singing more on this album than on the other album, on the first one. Yeah, some people say that, uh, and some people say the other way around. Uh, we, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's not it's not bad. I mean, she's no, she's no, awesome. no. It, it works yeah, very yeah, well. She, yeah. yeah, she's great. Um, no, I, I have no idea. Um, it's not um, planned or anything. It's just, uh, just like when, when when we split uh, basically the lyrics up. We, uh, I think we, uh, yeah, it feels natural when we hear the song, like uh, and have all the lyrics. Okay, you should do this part. Uh, we do this part together, mm. and so on. Like it, we just do what's the best for the song. I think yeah. it's yeah, so you don't write a song specifically for you or her, right? You just whoever sounds no. better doing it. Yeah. No. No. I, I. I would say we. Yeah. We have to do what's best for the song, I think, yeah, or yeah. what we feel is the best for the song, of course. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, she's she's awesome, and your stuff's awesome too. I'm not usually not into that the growly, you know, like the uh, gargly kind of voice and stuff like that. I, I was also into. I don't know if you remember. I don't even know if this band's still around. Terisis. Yeah, uh, never heard of. You never heard of Terisis? They no. were like a huge band like a few years ago, and then they all of a sudden just like disappeared. But they're very similar. To how you guys are with like, uh, how do you uh, how do you spell it? Uh, or oh, it's us. Okay, see, see, uh, yeah, T T U R I S O A S. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's uh, when, I, when I first heard you guys. They, you kind of reminded me of how they used to be. You know, they they end up changing yeah. their their sounds and stuff like that. But uh, shit, what the hell was I even getting at with that one? <laughs> I don't even know. No, that. no, no. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I also. There, there's some resemblance for sure. Yeah, yeah. So you weren't, you weren't even like, uh, were you into them at all? Or no. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, they have some great songs. Uh, like their hit Rasputin, I really mm -hmm. like, and they have one song called um, Battle Metal. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So on. Yeah, I like it. And they're also doing it like. There's, the, how do you say, like all in, they leave nothing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Behind the stage, it's, it's all like they couldn't go up and do it in t-shirts and right. yeah, jeans exactly. either. No, no, not at all. Actually, I, I have a band, and I, I opened for them at one point, and it was cool. They had it. They put on a cool, pretty, uh, pretty cool show because they still wore all the get up and stuff like that. It was cool yeah. to see that. Um, do, do you because you you sing you, you i don't know what kind of style do you you call that uh like growling uh, 
No, I, I don't. Um, it's not yeah, death metal. I, I, it's not. It's no, it's no, like, no. Uh, but where um, Jocke is the one doing the growly parts, most of it. Oh, all right. Um, we're three vocalists, so right. Um, yeah, I, because I, you got like 20, 20 band members. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I know. Who's who? No, no. It's it's <laughs> totally fine. I also do that. Like uh, for example, end of. Uh, Hail that song. Okay. Um, there's a growling part there. I'm doing a lot of growling. Uh, otherwise, I'm doing the spoken parts and I'm doing like backup vocals. And I have like I can also do the same kind of voice that uh, Joachim does, but okay. I do it lower basically. Right. Than the, so just as a uh, backing him up a lot of oh. the times and so on. Okay. Oh, all yeah. right. Yeah, what was the what was like what I mentioned before? You got so many people in the band. Is that how many people have been in the band since the beginning? Uh, eight. Eight people. Uh, That's a lot of know. people in the band. You know, you got to yeah. pay all those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why we will never make it because yeah, we can I know. pay everyone. <laughs> no, no but, um, <laughs> no, but yeah, it's no big plan behind it. We're eight friends, and uh, like, yeah, that's how it how yeah. it ended up. But yeah. yeah, what we felt we needed, and um, yeah, I, yeah, it's just we don't really care about money and and that kind of yeah. stuff. We're we're literally in this for the laughs and having fun and getting like great experiences. Yeah. Like we we get to travel and and get to meet fantastic people and play amazing stages that we only dreamt of playing before and, and so on. So it's, I mean, it's very much just, I don't know, yeah. weird, weird adult uh, <laughs> game. Almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's like you all have your like regular day jobs, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So this is kind of like, you know, your, your fun time. Yeah, Which is good but, because a lot of bands lose that, you know, and that's why they they some bands put out really shitty albums. And you guys, if you <laughs> keep that fun going on, then you know, hopefully your albums continue to be fun and, and good. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie; it would be really fun to earn a living from oh, from this as well. Yeah, yeah. but but um, at the moment, it's not possible. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I don't, I don't know how bands do it, especially like new bands like yourself. I don't know how bands do it today because. Uh, I don't know how any bands really make any money doing music besides selling merch and stuff, you know? Yeah, as as a metal band, I think merchandise is the most important right. uh, source of income. Um, but, like, um, yeah, and that means you need to tour a lot. And that yeah. means it's really hard to have kids at home and oh, course, ha- yeah. have a day job and so on. Um, yeah, so we'll see what, what, what happens. Yeah, yeah. What was the best show you played so far? Oh, we just came home from a tour, so I'm a bit, um, how do you say, uh, biased towards those shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we had it in um, Pratteln, it's called in um, Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Uh, was such an amazing crowd, and like everything was. Perfect, great stage, great people that work there, awesome food, like everything. The whole day was just bonkers, super yeah. nice. But yeah, I think festivals, like last year, Sweden Rock uh, for the uh-huh. first time, and we're playing like a s- small stage. I wouldn't say there's any small stages at that festival, but... Yeah. Um, usually there's like three, four thousand people there, and w- we walk out on stage, and uh, yeah, there's afterwards. I heard by the guy running the stage that uh, it was around ten, eleven thousand people, and oh, wow. was was super fun. Super oh yeah, super I can fun. imagine. <laughs> I played in front of eight hundred people, and that was enough for me. I was happy. Yeah, but eight hundred. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine playing in front of that many people. It's the same. Yeah, <laughs> it's. Yeah, uh, it's I, I would say it's the same. Yeah. It's no no big difference. Like the the biggest difference is when you play like smaller clubs, like we did in the beginning when we could barely fit eight people onto the stage. Yeah. Uh, like people yeah. standing like this, trying yeah, to yeah, not yeah, yeah. pierce each other's eyes with the strings and 
stuff. Uh, that's the biggest difference, I would say. Um, like that you actually have space on the stage and you can present a, a decent show that's not like watching a mosh pit on stage. Right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so that, that's the biggest difference yeah. between playing small and big stages for me. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, what, how much um, for like your next album? Are you already writing stuff for that already? Or uh, yeah, we got some songs, but we haven't really gone into to writing mode full on. It will happen probably within next couple of weeks. Uh, mm. We'll start writing new stuff, but. Um, yeah, we have some songs, but no clear theme or or anything like that. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you all you all contribute song uh, lyrics and stuff, or this is one main guy? Uh, usually, it's six of us uh, involved. Like not necessarily at the same time, but so three: um, the drummer uh, and two of the guitarists, uh, Mickey and David. Um, they do most of the music like not all of it but most of it mm. and usually it's me Ilva and uh, Jocke doing the lyrics and that's usually how it goes and then um, everyone puts their details into the song and like oh this mm. melody would be cool here or this solo blah, blah. yeah you know yeah. Um, and that's basically where the magic happens when all of us get to put their stuff into the song because that's when it starts sounding like us yeah. Now, did your band sound like this when you first got together? I mean, did you have all these like big orchestra things and things, or did you just sound like a normal band without all that? Mm, the like, first how, song. How did you the, get into doing with the orchestral stuff? Yeah, I, that's also. I think that just came with Johan because he's uh, so interested in it and mm. fits so well to to uh, what we do. Um, mm. Like in the first songs, uh, we didn't have a lot. Like the first songs we did was um, Son of Odin, uh, Fire, Blood and Steel, Gods of War, um, Tyr, basically the first songs. Um, but then towards the end of the writing for the first album, like Prophecy of Ragnarök, Defenders of Valhalla, Freya and and those songs. Then we started implementing it more and more. Uh, yeah. I would say, and now we use it more or less on every song. Yeah. So, yeah. Some ex- exceptions, like Chainbreaker, we felt like we don't need that right. much. Uh, here. Yeah, it'd be too much. Yeah. 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 Some songs you can tell it's just it'd be overburdened with uh, some of that stuff. Yeah. On. Yeah. yeah. I, I was listening to the the first song. I mean, it's it's stupid, but. Uh, uh, the power snake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that a sexual in your window or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's so stupid. We, at one point, we actually also uh, thought of naming the album uh, the Power Album. Yeah. As, as well, like, so what? We're so stupid. I don't know why. Like, <laughs> if, uh, actually, Power Snake. I would say from the beginning, it's it, it was a joke, and yeah, then it yeah, just yeah. stuck. Right. And then, yeah, okay, are we doing this? Yeah, I guess we're doing this. Right. Like, we could call it s- something else, like mm-hmm. Jörmungandr, or like something more perhaps true to the Norse mythology, but no, nah, right. it, it fits who we are, I, I guess. Right. Yeah. Tongue in cheek. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of the lyrics I can't think of the what the time I had, but I was just like laughing at some of them because you can take them a different way, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. that's the point. Yes, exactly. It's good to have a sense of humor because a lot of bands don't do that. Yeah, it, there's so much darkness going on, anyways, in the world. Right. So might might as well have some fun while it lasts. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, since you're from Sweden, I mean, a lot of bands are always, you know, doing their uh, music in English and stuff like that. Do you ever feel like you should have not have done English? You could have done, you know, your native languages and stuff? Or... I think that's a very, um, like in Sweden, that would have been um, bad, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so, too. Like, like be- because, like, we could have done it, but uh, the thing is that... Uh, the subject we're handling, like Norse mythology, it's somewhat held hostage by right-wing extremists. 
Uh, and they do songs like white power music yeah. basically on the same theme. So yeah. we would end up being high end white power music wow. and being used in probably the wrong right. context. Yeah. Yeah, right. so we're not so interested in, in doing that. But we added, uh, in one song now, we added like a, a small glimpse. We did um, Brothers Unite. We do the chorus in Swedish one time towards right. the end. Yeah, so like finicky stuff like that we we will still do. But uh, yeah, so we, in a lot of interviews in Sweden, we have to explain that we're not neo-nazis and <laughs> yeah, yeah stuff like yeah. or at least in the beginning now not so much but yeah right yeah also too if you want a wider fan base i mean i guess it's doing your music in english gets you more exposure yeah and is... i have no idea how rammstein did it but uh... i know i know, I know. you're not a really a big fan of them right no, 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 but no. I, I have no idea how they became so successful uh, doing it. In... Me neither. And and people here are so obsessed with them. And, and, and it's kind of weird to me because none of their songs are in English. I mean, they had probably had little things here and there because I, I don't listen to the music. But they had a show here not too long ago and like people were excited about it. I'm like, I just I don't get it. <laughs> it's one of those bands I just don't get. And I can tell you uh, that the lyrics mostly are super, super stupid as well. I, like, oh, yeah, of course. It, it makes no sense. Like, right. it, it's basically, you could basically sing numbers or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very weird a lot of the times. Yeah. yeah. That's like that uh, baby metal band from uh, Japan. Ah, no idea what they're singing. No. But uh, yeah. they, they seem to be having fun. They do. One song's yeah. about chocolate. It's like, oh, yep, really? Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. For sure. But, I mean, they're very successful in what they're doing. So, yeah. I mean, it's they do something right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, where do you where do you see the band? Are you ever going to come to the United States? Do you think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, actually, I had another... Uh, North American and Canadian interview earlier today, and we talked about this subject a bit. Uh, like, so the hardest part with going to the States is that the market is right. so, so different from the European one. And uh, on top of that, the distances, during, like both US and Canada, it's so far. Right. Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. a small tour is like four weeks. That's mm-hmm. a like not a big tour, right. um, so there it's a big investment going there, and um, we are way too unknown to be able to do a headline tour. Yeah. Uh, so basically, what needs to happen is that we need to find a band that's already big in the states, and we need to follow them on a tour right, yeah. one one way or another um so yeah we don't have anything directly in the works right now but we're very much looking to do it within i would say three years or so at least right yeah yeah good hope so you can maybe try to get on prog power that's that's a, that's probably like our biggest thing like with uh your style and you know yeah. the power metal kind of style I don't know if yeah, you've there, heard of that before. Yeah, there are some some really big festivals that we should should attend. Um, Prog Powers, seventy thousand tons of metal as well yes. as the cruise. Yeah, that stuff one seems like to that. be doing good because that started a few years ago and it's still going. So I, I guess they do that. Uh, they do fairly well with that. Yeah, and and I have a lot of friends that's been playing uh, th- that cruise and all of them said like you need to go if you get the yeah. chance just just go it's so amazing so yeah. i guess it's uh, combined enter like going on a cruise it's like that's a playground for right. adults right like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so much fun and then if you get to play metal as well in front of a lot of people what's the, what's the hook like yeah. <laughs> there's there's no catch to it like just great tons of fun and right. also in the like caribbean i mean it's warm nice yeah. Yeah. yeah have you been to it no i've i've never been on a cruise ever so oh I, no i've never th- been on then a you, 
then you should you should do it it's should. great great i would but you know what that's kind of strange. my wife she don't listen to metal really at all ah, okay, and okay. for me to go on a cruise by myself with a bunch of other people it's just kind of weird yeah that's weird <laughs> you should you, you... i'll see you later i'm going on a cruise <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 that's that's weird yeah if she did it would it would be cool i would probably do it at least once because there's, there's yeah. cruises for everything now. There's even, a, um, I don't know if you are familiar, uh, like wrestling or anything. I don't know, you know, Chris Jericho. He's got his own yeah. cruise. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he does his own cruise. He's got uh, music on his cruise. And then he also does wrestling on yep. his cruise. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, nice. you know, that's pretty cool. I mean, that, that, that's like the, the new thing now. Like everybody's trying to do a cruise. That They got the Kiss cruise. They got the 70,000, uh, you know, the metal yeah. cruise. And yeah. Jer- Jericho cruise. Yep. So it's a, it's it's a, there's a lot of new things out there because people are just trying to do something new to uh, you know you, you got to make money because the, the way the way like the the record labels are now and just everything's just such a mess and and I'm surprised it hasn't straightened up by now you know it's it's been like this for a very long time yeah like it, it's so hard to make money like like I said merchandise that, that's like a metal band today to be able to like earn. And, and make a good profit needs to be uh, basically a clothing brand, a traveling yeah. cl- clothing brand who yeah. occasionally plays metal, like yeah. more more or less. Yeah, gotta be like Ghost. They have a shirt for every goddamn song. <laughs> yeah, the Ghost is Sabaton as well. Sabaton is doing great with the yeah. money. Yeah. Um, like we're obviously friends with the guys in Sabaton. Yeah. We, we met them now on tour, like by accident, more or less. Oh, really? We had we had our day off in Munich, and the same day they were playing Munich, so mm-hmm. we we went to their show and so on. And, and like the production, they they oh. travel around with like yeah. seven seven big trucks, uh, oh, yeah. five nightliners with crew. Like it's that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. They don't bring that over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 of course not. But, <laughs> like, that's very expensive. Um, I know they will come, and I think they will bring quite a lot next time they come. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Their, their popularity is getting uh, a lot more here than, uh, than it has been. Yeah, I, but I do they, have, they have put in a lot of work, though. Like, oh, yeah. uh, they have been grinding through some really really horrendous tours before mm. growing big in the state so oh, that's yeah. a, a lot of why i know it's a different market and how oh, yeah. hard it is yeah 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 definitely it's very yeah it, this uh, especially new york <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a very hard place to do new especially york now, is... new york too a lot of places have closed down it's just um it's yeah. it's sad. Uh, if you're not a big band, there's really nowhere for you to play. I mean, there's there's smaller clubs and everything, but yeah, it's just some of the bands that come here to play. They just don't they don't sell out the shows, and it's it's sad. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, for I think sure. um, I think Gravedigger came here a few years ago, and I think there was like 50 people there. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah, especially Gravedigger. I mean, they've been around since the 80s. Like you know, you can't fill yeah. out an arena, you know, a little club. Yeah, sad. it's weird. But, Hopefully that don't happen to you guys. You can come here and uh, play. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, I wish you a lot of success with the band. I think it's awesome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. And um, yeah, I can't wait to hear the next album. Like I said, this album's awesome. The first album's awesome. Uh, yeah, keep up the good work. Yeah, we'll we'll try to. Thank you so much. (laughs) No problem. We'll be talking soon. Hopefully, we'll talk on the next album. Yeah, sure. Take care. All right. You too. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Goodbye. All right. I almost let you go. Before I forgot, where could uh, people find you and where can they get your album? Uh, Our album, you can find at uh, AFM Records. Uh, Find them on Facebook or uh, Google. Uh, if you want more information on us, just go to our Facebook. Uh, it's Brothers of Metal Official. Also, same name on Instagram as well. All right, awesome. You're not on Twitter or anything? Everybody's on Twitter. Yeah, I am on Twitter, but the band <laughs> uh, doesn't have a Twitter. Okay. And, Do you want people to message you on Twitter or be friends with you on Twitter? Or no? I, you can follow me. I'm I'm called Blued with a W. B-L-E-W-D. All right. 
Yeah. All right, I I will add you. Are you on Facebook too as well or no? Uh, no, 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 no Facebook. All right. So I will add you on Twitter. Yeah, do it. All right. All right awesome. Go the check blue, out the blue the underscore. It is by the way. Oh, some blue. some jerk stole it. Really? Yeah. Two followers or so. <laughs> Bastard. Well, yeah. maybe you can write uh, another song about it or something. Yeah, I will do. For next album. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Awesome. Well, awesome. I'll add you to that. And everybody, go please go buy their album. You're going to love it, I promise. Cheerio. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Have a good night. See ya. Bye. Bye. What? <laughs>